It's interesting because we do this church retreat annually and the first time that Rachel went through, she was actually dubbed the prune queen. <laughs> And baby clothes. Yep. Someone just commented about how I need to get, actually a lot of people commented about how I need to get like sleepers and newborn size clothes and preemie clothes. And I had already placed this giant order. Those types of things are ones that I wanted to get like second hand or get really good deals on. When my mom was here shopping with me and we got all of those clothes that we did in the previous vlog, which I'll link in the iCard, um, my mom wanted to get like boutique cute clothes. So that's what we focused on. But all of the other stuff I have now got. And I got it from Swap.com, which is like, if you've ever heard of Red Up or any like secondhand store online, they're amazing. So I just got this haul of stuff for $80. Okay, we got everything unpackaged, and this was the last thing we unpackaged. That has to be the smallest swimsuit ever invented. <laughs> it's so cute! So, like I said, this all is like secondhand stuff, and it was really cheap. The average item was probably $2 on swap.com. This is not a sponsored ad. Mm. Uh, it was just a heck of a deal. These things are called buntings, and in South Carolina, it doesn't really get cold enough to need like a winter coat, but I think this will be perfect for them. Like if we need to take them to a doctor's appointment, just throw them in that with their clothes on. Speaking of winter, got a little ski onesie. Oh yeah, ski onesie. This little, is gonna be her. A little pea coat. Pea coat. And then just like everybody mentioned, I, I have taken care of my nieces and nephews when they're infants and I know how awesome these things are where you just pull them up, change their diaper, slide it back down. You don't have to mess with buttons or zippers. So we have a whole bunch of these. We've got one of them, two. This one's really cute. It has little animals all over it. And I got these in like preemie, newborn, and zero to three month sizes. So I bet a lot of these have hardly been used or have been used at all. All of these have the scrunchies at the bottom, and then all of the onesies that I got with like the footy, I chose the ones with the zipper, so we're not having to do snaps. When we have to change their clothes and diapers all the time, get all those. This is adorable with the little polar bear on it. I thought that was really cute. This is um, a sleep, one of those sleep sacks, which we had registered for, and we've actually already received one of, and it's the one that's, that you can swaddle to but I got another one. They're like, these are like 30 bucks and I think this one was $4 or it was $8 and I got 50% off, so like four bucks. Wow. Yep. How'd you get 50% off? Just by being a first time. I just Googled swap.com coupon code and I found one 50%. Nice. I know. Um, cute little overalls. So definitely added to our stash of baby clothes a lot more practical. Brad got the camera all put away, and then I realized that he forgot one item that he had thrown behind him as we were unpackaging everything. Rachel got toilet paper. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's the worst joke ever. <laughs> it's the cutest little onesie. It was so funny, like, on this website there's hundreds, no, probably thousands of, like, onesies, and that was the only NFL onesie I found on the whole website. And <laughs> Because the people didn't want it, obviously. Oh my gosh. It's the best team ever. Good morning, it's Saturday. Just dropped Rachel off at work. Poor thing, has to work today. Uh, but I'm gonna be working here at home, and what I'm gonna be doing is a little DIY project. After we did our house tour, we had a couple of comments that asked us to do a DIY on how we did the frame 
of our mirror in our bathroom. So it looks like this. Go Cubs. And here's the upstairs bathroom mirror that we'll be framing out. All right, so first things first, let's get this measured so that we can cut our wood. All right, it is exactly five foot, 60 inches, 60 inches. By 41.5. Let's go cut some wood. One of the perks about Rachel having an Etsy business and making all sorts of science is that we always have wood just kind of laying around our shed. So we're gonna be using this real cheap wood here. It's a, just a little bit over three and one fourth inch wide wood. We just get this wood at Lowe's and I think it's only, it's like $1.50 or $1.68 uh, for a big piece of it. So super cheap. Just so happened to already have a piece that's already cut to 60 inches. What are the chances? All right, so we're doing a little math here. If we draw it out, our mirror, we're gonna do the full 60 inches here. And to start with, this was 41.5, but these are 3.25, 3.25, 3.25. So that plus that is actually 6.5. So we're gonna have 41.5 minus 6.5. So these boards right here need to be 35 inches. Safety first, put on the glass. So that left a pretty rough edge, so I'm gonna go ahead and sand that. All right, we got them all cut. Now, let's get them painted, stained, and let them dry. So this wood had one side that's really rough, and then one side that's more smooth. So I think we'll do this side that's more smooth. I think that'll come out great. So to get a more like rustic barn wood look, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a couple of spots here with the blue, and then I'll stain it, and then we'll do a little bit of white paint, and then sand it down. Just gonna use some uh, classic gray colored stain. So as you can see, I put copious amounts of stain. Uh, it was a really thin stain, and obviously we're gonna be sanding it when we're completely done, so I wanted to get as dark as I could. And it takes a while to dry, so I'm just setting it in the sun to let it dry. But yeah, it's gonna come out great. So we're going to get prune juice, because this, I talked about it in my last update which we'll link in the iCard that I have this like weird pain like cramping aching pain underneath my rib on this side and so today it got a lot worse and it was like more of an area usually it's just like the size of a few fingertips and today it's like this entire side is hurting and cramping and aching and it was doing that at work and so I called our on-call doctor our on-call OBGYN and he said it could be my gallbladder, but it didn't sound like it because I hadn't eaten anything like really fatty. Or it could be constipation of the ascending colon, which is on this side. And I guess it's a common place that you get constipated when you're pregnant. Super glamorous. So he said to drink warm 
prune juice. I tried to drink cold prune juice like when, I think it, was it when we were doing IVF? Like all the hormones just really mess with your digestion and I drank cold prune juice then and it's like hard to stomach so I can't imagine drinking it warm. But that's the plan, so. It's interesting because we do this church retreat annually and the first time that Rachel went through, she was actually dubbed the prune queen. <laughs> I like I like prunes. I like eating dried. I guess they're all dried. Prunes. But drinking prune juice is a different thing. <laughs> Whatever you say, honey. <laughs> While we're here, I want to I want to look around and see what all of our options are before we really settle on something. Really? These are so good. We could do minis. Minis. <laughs> oh my gosh. Carrot cake. Did you get one of those? It's hilarious. It's the actual carrot. Look, like it's two? a real live carrot that they put on it. <laughs> Should we just I think I'll get the light one. Hopefully that has everything I need. The weird thing is I don't, this is very personal TMI. I don't even really know if I'm constipated. <laughs> like, I don't think so. I feel like I would know. Yeah, you would think you would know it if you haven't had a BM in a while. Right, which pregnancy is just weird and it's like hard to keep track of everything, but I mean, I'll try it because it's really uncomfortable, but I'm not real hopeful. So we got our prune juice, cupcakes, carrot cake. We're headed to get ice cream. And I also grabbed some grapes because I'm, I used to be much more obsessed with grapes than I am now. Yeah, you slow down a little, which is good for our wallet. Seriously, they're expensive. And we used to, like, we used to have grapes as their own section of our budget. <laughs> not really. Almost. So I grabbed some grapes and the reason I picked the ones I did is because they were on sale for a dollar a pound, which is really cheap for grapes. If you buy a lot of grapes, you know that. But when they rang up, they rang up for a dollar ninety nine a pound. Did you? <sighs> I know. Why didn't you say anything? So that's the thing. I never say something. Mm -hmm. no. Neither do you. No, I don't. Are you the type of person to say something if you saw that on the tag it was supposed to be on sale for a dollar a pound and it's ringing up incorrectly? Do you like? Especially if there's a line behind you, do you like tell the person they need to do a price check on it? Price check on aisle eight. Because most of the time they'll physically have to walk over there to check. But Brad got something exciting too. Uh, Rachel has never ever ever had crystal clear Pepsi. Mm -mm. No desire Here. to really. Let's get her reaction. Weird. <laughs> it tastes like Pepsi. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, I was asking Brad, like, isn't the color, like the dye or color that they put in soda one of the things that makes them bad for you? Why wouldn't they just make them all clear? It's a good question. There you have it, folks. First time Rachel's ever had crystal clear Pepsi. You saw it here first. <laughs> what a riveting channel this is. Yeah. Brad's trying to drive Andy his ice cream. I'm getting started on my prune juice, so we're good. I'm filming you guys with my knees. My doctor said to drink this warm. I don't know. We don't. I don't know how to interpret that. If it means like just not cold, like room temperature, or if I actually need to warm it up in the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know how much this is a drink. So, cheers. Chug it, chug it, chug it. Oh, it's not that bad. It's actually really sweet. I wonder how much I'm supposed to drink. I'd say go ahead and finish it. <laughs> it's like the size of my head. That'll get me flushed out. Yeah, that'll clean up pipes. <laughs> so I'm normally not one to like call my doctor all the time every time I feel a little twinge of something, but I'm at the point in my book where it says like anything around 19 weeks and after, and even before that sometimes with twins, 
you have to be really aware of the signs of preterm labor because it becomes a really real possibility. And I have a couple of risk factors that make it more likely for me, like my height. If you're 5'1 or under, then you're at like a 30% chance higher risk of going into preterm labor because you like you reach the maximum expansion sooner, I guess. So that's one of them. Um, if you start out at a normal weight when you get pregnant or underweight, that's another one. Um, if it's your first pregnancy, that's another one. So I'm just trying to be really careful if I have anything that's like consistent, any symptom that's consistent and I can't really explain it, then I'll be calling my OB to figure out if it's something I need to worry about or not. So um, hopefully the prune juice helps, but <laughs> I don't know, the gallbladder thing sounds kind of likely because I know that's exactly where my gallbladder is and this type of pain comes and goes and is worse sometimes and better sometimes. So I don't know, if you have gallbladder issues, maybe let me know if this, what I'm describing sounds like that at all. But. <laughs> Iris says, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you wanna follow us on our journey. With the DIY thing, should we make it a to be continued? Oh yeah, well, I think it's hilarious that Brad, like the painting part of the rustic wood stuff that we do is always something that I do. And so when he was taking me to work today, I was kind of explaining how I go about painting them. And Why, why are we kneeling down? I don't <laughs> know. I don't know, because it gets heavy to hold it. Well, and you're so short. It's... Okay, the painting part he doesn't normally do, so I don't know. The spray paint I wouldn't recommend. I would recommend doing. You, we'll see you how it turns that? out. We'll see how it turns out. Yeah, we'll see how it turns out, but we'll continue it in our next vlog in case you're following along. To stay see, tuned. Yeah, to see how to finish that. It's super easy. Talk to you tomorrow. Okay, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Woohoo!